from isolated workers to standardized production, the example of textile crawford during the Bronze Age in France, um, we have chosen to do the, uh, this topic because of my uh, further master to uh, degrees work. And I used to work on uh, textile craft work, particularly in uh, Brittany. And uh, even if the material were not um, as um, uh, as many as I th thought, the data corpus was particularly interesting, uh, particularly concerning um, weaving tools that are not especially well uh, studied in Europe or. There are, there are a large amount of uh, uh, weaving tools, but um, the data are very sporadic and sometimes it's not studied as it should be. So we, within these uh, studies, I will sh show the main result and how uh, that uh, particular craft, textile craft, um, Evolve during middle to uh, final Bronze Age. So uh, this is the, this is a first um, overview of uh, textile research in Europe. So as you can see on this map, this is not um, with tools. This is only uh, all the textile remains, such as. Um, wool that you can then see in Denmark. Also some um, some part of the material can be seen in Germany, mostly in Switzerland. And um, in France this is kind of particular because it was all the area I uh, studied and um, in uh, Brittany and I didn't thought I, I would find e enough material on this uh, master degree because um, Britain grounds are supposed to be very acid. So um, it was not an easy subject, but, but within my research I found about 10 to 11 uh, textile remains which are most, um, mostly made of uh, linen or flax, which is a Contrast a bit with um, all um, the other uh, European example we got. For our example in, um, in Denmark, in Switzerland, in Germany, we got not mostly uh, wool, but this, this is a major part. But we don't have that much weaving tools or spinning tools, for example. But in Brittany, and uh, that's the interesting part, we only have uh, linen remains during all the Bronze Age, um, ancient Bronze Age to final Bronze Age, this is only linen. And the tools that can be associated with seems to be... Um, uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <coughs> Seems to be adapted to to that um, to that particular material. So this is a general overview of um, the typical chronology I have, I have made. So uh, the first data, even I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, even if I had a few uh, data uh, during my research, there are a few sites that um, are probably considered as a craft work sites and not in a domestic uh, way, but probably in a, in a more speci specialized way. So, uh, for the ancient Bronze Age, I have uh, remarked that all the loom weights are, are kind of cylindrical and kind of really heavy. 
And by heavy, I mean uh, one kilogram and a half to two kilograms, which is uh, kind of heavy for uh, webbing tools. So um, I decided to uh, do some experimentations to see how that particular um, material can be uh, put on a loom and how it works on the loom, how uh, how does it function. And uh, within my studies, I realized with some uh, with some time uh, that that particular uh, class of uh, loom weight is mostly uh, designed and th thought to uh, have w worked with linen because uh, fibers of linen and more, and more generally uh, vegetal fibers are more uh, are more long and more st strong than animal fiber within uh, this period. So um, there would be too much um, too much uh, um, changing uh, in the tissue, and it would be a, uh, of a bad uh, quality if it was made with wool. And um, other things I have remarked is that the more you um, uh, you advance in times, I would say. Uh, you can see there is a slight um, changing in the shapes and in the morphology of these materials. Uh, instead of being um, cylindrical, it's more like trapezoidal sh shape or triangle sh shape. And I tried to do some experiment with that also. But it seems that it, even if those kind of sh shapes are more uh, common during the Iron Age. You, you can already see that um, there is a kind of tendency during the Middle Bronze Age, but uh, still, those kind of um, of tools are still not made for wool, uh, wood weaving, or wool uh, textile craft because it's still too. Heavy. It's about one kilogram and a half, or two kilograms, and we can mostly say that all the it uh, it has some connections with the textile demand that we got because every single uh, every single uh, loom weights that I find are not uh, are not adapted to. Um, animal fibers, but mostly and linen. And one thing that is interesting is that kind of, uh, of thing. So uh, when I first uh, started to analyze that, I wasn't sure of what I was um, of uh, what I would find. Uh, unfortunately, uh, all the textile remains uh, are made um, are not um, uh, made uh, for clothes. It's made uh, in that particular case for a scabbard ele element. And uh, some data that we can find uh, contradictive is that in ancient Bronze Age, uh, the tissues were more um, more. Uh, I wouldn't say. F Fine, but um, delicate. That the fabric that, that we can find in the middle and uh, late Bronze Age, but mostly because all the tissues find uh, for uh, final Bronze Age are <coughs> used for um, for st storage. So it is n n not the same use at all. But um, with that. Uh, particular kind of uh, remains, we were able to say that um, to say th uh, that the spindle wheel that were used were not um, uh, heavier than uh, 20 grams, because if it was heavier, uh, the, the diameter of the yarn would have been heavier. So. This is a multidisciplinary approach because 
um, I couldn't uh, study that as not being a serologist. That's why Antoine will uh, do the, the rest. Okay. So. Okay. So first, uh, I have to introduce myself. I'm Antoine Coqual. Uh, I'm a ceramologist specialized in uh, ceramology and uh, in 3D for archaeology. And I have to apologize already for my rude English. So I will try to speak slowly. slowly. So I will present you today uh, a small study that, that I did uh, to uh, help her in, this, uh, in his master thesis uh, on the loom weights. That seems to prove, uh, to, or at least to, to, give, uh, to give us some clues, uh, that they were, uh, they, they were existing uh, a standardization and a, and a normalization of the production uh, of tissue during the Middle Bronze Age. So the, the case uh, I will present to you is BD, uh, is a very particular, uh, particular case of uh, findings of uh, loom because uh, they were well contextualized in three uh, pits, uh, and uh, there, there is, um, it is the site where we found, where we found uh, the most great number of this, uh, this, this object in Britain. So, okay. so uh, the first thing, the first uh, clues of uh, standardized production in the typology. As you can see there, on 38 uh, loom weight fans, uh, there is only five types you can, uh, you can find. Smaller and bigger, but uh, it seems to be uh, like uh, a functional wall, to form a functional wall to be used directly in a loom. Long weights, when you study long weights uh, as an object itself, it seems to show also that uh, they were manu manufactured, um, they were especially manufactured to work in with special law. Firstly, because of the morphological is the same from, from we, um, for each type, there is not many differences of weight and uh, condition. And more, uh, more than that, there is a on every uh, loom weight, you can uh, find a center of, gravi of, gra of gravity. I mean, there is still, uh, in, uh, there is always uh, a part with uh, more than the other one. Okay. Another cruise uh, for standardized production is uh, the marks, uh, marks of a uh, Probably special special way to attachment uh, on the on the looms for the loom weights. And you, you can see we have many uh, most of the loom weights I, I like this. They present two marks marks on each side of the, on, on each side of them, who seem to be uh, used marks, you know. But it also shows that it, it was uh, attached to a special way, so uh, a normalized way to work. Tools made to last uh, over time. In fact, when all, uh, all of what I speak, uh, the, the, the loom weights seem to be well manufactured and uh, all of these objects in the one of the, the pits uh, were conserved inside uh, a small pottery. So probably that means also uh, there were like they, they were tools, uh, specialized tools. They were uh, they were precious uh, to conserve. So uh, for methodological reflections, uh, this. Small study perhaps introduce a, a debate on the interpretation we used to do on that, that, that type of object, domestic or special, special large craft, craft work, because uh, in most of the many publications, you can, win, you can read when they find loom weights, just loom weights, it's domestic, because they, they, they are loom weights. But in fact, uh, 
pour les exercices pour les because the serological way to study the whales is not that it's not adaptive to that to that type of object because they are, they are tools and not finite products. So a small number of them is not meaning that uh, the produ production of tissue are small. So maybe we, mm, we need new investigation methods uh, as we can we to, to work with other disciplines, maybe. A new representation support, because to do a traceology uh, on the loom weights uh, with only pictures and, uh, and uh, drawing, it's not very possible. Maybe we should uh, systematically uh, do it in three dimensions. And to quickly conclude, um, we can say uh, through this data that all um, the data is reveal a perfect control of weaving methods, and by that it means that um, all the tools were um, calibrated because the length. Uh, that's one of the things I forgot to say, uh, were, was equivalent of the fabric on the loom weights. It, it was al almost the same uh, length when I studied to study uh, that. So maybe there is a standardization and uh, we need to have more data to uh, to um, to extend the, firstly, the chronology of these uh, studies, because it is only from uh, age in Brittany, but perhaps if we could uh, study more, like uh, first Iron Age, we will be ab able to um, give new uh, answers to these transformations and see uh, if it's uh, due to uh, other kind of um, uh, weaving techniques, if some new weaving techniques appear, so you can see some um, some uh, some, inf some influence on the tools. And uh, for that kind of study, what could be uh, interesting would be to incorporate paleo environmental data, archaeological and traceological. Uh, why um, archaeozoology? Because uh, in some studies it was not entirely proved, but it was clearly, clearly said that um, during Bronze Age uh, you can see an increase of uh, sheep remains uh, in some sites, and uh, with that increase. Uh, it was possible to see uh, in textile remains m m more uh, textile and fabric made at, out of wool. So it is um, another um, another clue and another step to that kind of studies and see if um, um, pastoralism. pastoralism. I'm sorry, I just know the word. Uh, could have influenced uh, simply uh, within craft and if this change could be seen with a multidisciplinary approach. Yes. That's it. Oh, I'm over the time. I'm sorry. So if you